Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now then, a lot of people must think we have the life of Riley, fishing all the time, making films. But unfortunately, those films cost money to make. I'm out there doing the best I can, but I'm constantly battling, constantly fighting the workload. Yes, I still go to work. I'm not one of those sponsored anglers that sits around lakes, fisheries, rivers, day after day, trying to catch a fish, man alive. A, it would drive me mad, and B, I've got a job to do. So people said, let's have a bit of a vlog, a video log, on what is going on in Graham's day. Well, I can tell you, a lot of work, and this sounds daft, I like hard work. That sounds weird, it? but I actually do like hard work. So here's a little insight into just an average day where I'm trying to rush around, get the jobs done, and squeeze in maybe two, three hours fishing. It started tomorrow, by the way, not tonight. Looking at the back of the totally awesome fishing car, it's gonna be full of fishing tackle. I just done all the paperwork this morning, get myself going. There is the car, I've got all the rubbish from the flat from last night's work. And Mike's doing something totally awesome outdoors, I think it looks like something to do with axes and he's got my Makita drill there with a wire brush so I guess he's going to be cleaning the axes up anyway as you can see it's like a bomb site between fishing tackle from different trips gardening stuff and all the property maintenance stuff bits and pieces I mean does it ever end work no I want this ball for repairing a wardrobe unit I've got, I'm going to need my nail box. God, why do I save so many nails? I don't know. You never know when you need a nail. And two lots of paint, because the wife's going to be helping me out, because I want to get Xander fishing and the, the clock's ticking. Even in my pocket, I have a telephone. Yes, I have a telephone. And most people don't have these in their pockets. Second-hand sink plugs and chains. You never know when you're going to need a second-hand sink plug. Right, let's hit the streets and get over the dump and dump this rubbish. Right, another thing that annoys me when I'm up in the morning. Voice-actuated gates. Okay, there's the gates opening. That's lovely. But what about the stupid delivery driver that forced one gate open just so you could put a parcel inside, bent it, and it cost... £250 for one gate opening unit, which I had to fit myself. We're up, we're on the road, we're going to try and get to the dump, dump this stuff, hope they're not doing a container emptying session there, because sometimes they close the gates, and fingers crossed I can get rid of the rubbish and at last, get started. Whee, wish I had a motorbike. Actually, I was never allowed to have a motorbike as a youngster. All my mates had motorbikes. I think the basis was a 125 Honda and they took the baffles out of them in case those people don't know the baffles are in the exhaust pipes intended to keep the sound noise down what all my pals from school wanted as loud a motorbike as they could possibly get so they stripped the baffles out which is probably all legal and they went Rah! really loud motorbikes I in the meantime had a push bike because my father had a motorbike and broke his back on one I believe, I think that was the story of a mum and they said you are not having a motorbike well they are dangerous no question but you know you see people going around on the great fun aren't they but here I am in a car it's nice it's warm got electric heated seats and I don't know if they have electric heated seats on motorbikes maybe they do nowadays right on the road to the dump oh right another rant but before we get to the dump why not say for like 120 years this has been a 40 mile an hour a 50 mile an hour sorry designated area and for some obscure reason one bright spark from the highways or whoever the powers may be has made it 40 miles an hour well the old boys in blue love that because they sit down the bottom here and clock people who don't realize after 50 years of being 50 that it's now a designated 40 and yes they can feed those tickets as fast as they can so i'm doing 40.1 boring and you would think wouldn't you there's all this lovely scenery on the background 
going down this leafy covered lane that I'm going fishing. Wrong. Just follow your nose. It's going to the dump and it's going to the sewage farm which backs onto the dump. And yes, there's a massive queue there. Now here's the sort of thing we're up against in this country. This is really topical. I've just been to the dump. In, in one of the bags, wait for this, were two tiles. Two tiles. Now they've recently uh, implemented an alleged rule that for builders, obviously a lot of which I'm not, although I do my own properties, is uh, you have to pay for bathroom suites and all that sort of stuff. So he's trying to charge me for two tiles, not a sack of tiles off, off, of, off of an entire bathroom strip out, nothing like that, two tiles. So obviously I've told him where to go and where I will take the tiles and I will just put them in the rubbish bin. I mean that is, this country, do you know what? Let me get out of here before I get slaughtered by a 10 wheel lorry. This country is ridiculous. And recently, it was one of the, I think it was Surrey Council, one of the councils, I saw in the paper, only last night, it may well be illegal, this charging of goods that would normally be designated DIY household waste. Yes, I know there's a lot of guys out there don't know about it. There's also a lot of guys like me working, and I don't do this for a living, that are having these sort of problems. But wouldn't it be nice to think that it's illegal, they cannot charge us, and in fact, he said in the paper, they might have to refund everybody back. And that's what it says in the paper, so anybody interested in all these new dumping charges, check it out on the internet, see what the new laws are. I guess it's gonna to go to the court cases or whatever it normally does. In the meantime, normal people like me, it just makes life that much more difficult. But am I paying for a sack of tiles when I've got two tiles? The answer to that is nobody or not. On to the flat. Okay, so basically this guy who's just on the runner has left it in a shocking state. The best way to do your washing up, in case you want to know people, is just don't lay it on the draining board. Never lay it on the draining board. It's much better just to put it on a sheet of newspaper, let the water run everywhere, and it rots out the covers and the drawers stick. Dear God alive. I don't know how some people live. Don't tell the landlord about the damp, will you? Because, I mean, he might be able to do something about it. Okay, let's move on. But what I do is with an empty property, I always turn the power off. I just had a new consumer ball put in there. So, it's just a safety factor. I turn it off every time. And then, we spent, wait for this, people, two days dumping all this guy's wardrobes, stinking beds, food in the freezer that had been left there two weeks and switched off. But anyway, job today is, ta-da, this room here has got to be turned into something halfway usable. We stripped all the old paint off, we got painted out, we're all painted out, we're gonna try and salvage that wardrobe over there. But the main thing is I've gotta clear all this out now, clean the floor back, try and get, uh, I'm gonna put paper down on there, and then try and get some boarding down there. And all this has to be done in order for me to go fishing <sighs> in about four, four or five hours. It's really gonna be cutting it fine today. Right, in the bathroom here, we stripped the whole lot out, and what we've got, we've had Artex on top, and then they've had damp all up the top, which they've not opened the windows or had the extractor running, which is here. So just so people know, you have an extractor, which is generally on a timed overrun, so when you switch it off, the light, it still has an automatic overrun of a designated time, uh, according to building regulations. They don't want to pay the electric and it also sucks the heat out, so they switch it off. That makes mould on the top there, all landlords will know about this. And of course, if you don't tell the landlord, it gets worse and worse, then you have to repair the ceiling, which this is. Same for the walls, but we stripped all the Artex off the walls there, all the way down. Going to have a go at retiling that. I'm not paying for a tiler, I'm going to do it myself. And here, underneath this window, there's a bit of an iffy cracked area there. So what I'm going to do is because I'm on a time scale today, I'm going to put this in before I start that flooring or repairing any other, so that can be drying ready for tomorrow. See, what it is all about really is planning. Any DIY jobs as big as this is planning. Let's get some plaster mixed up. two days of rubbish, about three skips full, and he's left me two bigger wardrobes which I could break up, but I'm figuring 
they're just out to kill them. They're just wonderfully made things that you screw together and last about two years, if that. So I'm wondering, because I can't move it off all the pieces, if I put some end grain, which I've cut from ply here, across the back, try and square it up, I wonder will that hold it enough for me to be able to move it, and then I can put it back in position, and it will do somebody a good job, because it's still a useful cupboard. Stops me breaking up, taking it downstairs, and see if he's fit. underlay if you want, probably the proper way to go. I don't, I use layers and layers of newspaper because these are old wide floorboards, very old building. So obviously we're going to get some movement between the two uh, joints there. The paper just absorbs that and the boarding goes over the top. But don't just put it down, you've got to make sure your base is really clean. Small brush, hammer, one of these scrapers, any of these scrapers. And go along looking for nails that might have just risen a little bit bash them down, and then you can start laying it out. Well, what I'm going to do now, take the old earmuffs off, I'm going to pack a load of paper down to give me the base level, I'm going to be using this, you'll love this, you old timers. Look at that one. Does anybody out there with motorbikes remember that? Motorcycle news. I'm going to end up reading most of these if I put them down. Oh my God. 1978, the first test for the BMW Middleweight Masters. And it's got, unfortunately for me, not good news. Article on the Triumph Bonneville. That was one of the iconic bikes. Oh, and in case you want to know, in 1978, you could buy a Honda 650, a 650 for 1,475 pounds. OMG. Maybe what? What if my mum should let me have a motorbike, really? Let's get these on the floor, hopefully without reading them. killing me. But there you go, I reckon I'm about halfway through here. I stripped off the rest of the floor, banged all the nails down, sticking up anything up there, swept out, papered down, I'm ready for the second half. <sighs> Two o'clock already. I don't know if I'm going to get to Berry Hill Fishery to be honest. Going to be a close run thing. Let's get some grub first. I need a break. Really pushing the time now, depending on the traffic, I'm going to get all the all the rush out traffic. I've got no choice. 
from. Let's get in the car, get packed up, and just see if I can't get two or three hours Xander fishing. Just a little bit of a banker here, guys. Obviously, I'm so late, I've got no bait. Just texting Dave at the tackle shop at Burial Fisheries. Please take some roach out the freezer there for me otherwise i'm going to get there and it'll be solid this way at least when i pile through the horrendous traffic i'm going to get that i'll have some bait thawed out good old dave send right let's hit the streets and hit the traffic okay guys just pulled into the house gonna load up with tackle get some grub long tough day determined to try and catch at least one fish and it shows you what it's like a life in the day of a fishing mad filmmaker, building repairer, property designer, whatever you want to call me. Let's get down there, and the next time I'm going to see you, hopefully, you're going to be on the banks of Berry Hill Fisheries Main Lake. Check out the gloves, guys. It's really cold. Bigger this time. Nice fish. Ah, yeah, just about, just about to knock off them people. Hey, calm down, calm down, calm down. There he is. Oh, look where he's hooked. Almost get that one on my fingers. There you go. Hook out. Lovely looking fish there. Nice looking fish there. Sort of torpedo head to it, isn't it? But they're very, very twitchy bites, very twitchy bites. There he goes. Let him recover a second or two. There he is. Off he goes.